Welcome to the Octave tutorial number 2, Basic Operation. In this video we'll be looking at basic operations Octave has to offer. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Octave implements all of the standard arithmetic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and exponent. And it also has element by element equivalents which are all preceded with a dot. We will have a look at this later but for now let's look at the basic arithmetic. Ok so let's come over to Octave. And remember we can set our, our prompt string 1 to equal a arrow arrow space, close quotes. Ok, so now that we've changed our prompt, uh, we can start doing some uh, basic uh, uh, arithmetic. So we got 5 plus 5 and we get the answer is 10. We can also do things like 10 minus 5, the answer is 5. And we can do things like 1 divided by 2, so that's a forward slash and then it equals zero, 0 0.5. We can also do things like 5 times 5 and we get 25. And we can also do things like 2 to the power of 8. So that's the little up, up carrot. So we get 256. And we can also use uh, named variables like pi or main named constants. So pi. So 3.1416. Okay. Cool, so we'll jump back to the slideshow. Now, we can also use variables in Octave. And if you're asking what is a variable, a variable just stores and holds a value for later use. If you've done programming in any other language before, this will be very simple to grasp. We choose a variable name like a capital A and we assign a value of 5 to it. Octave will automatically decide what type of variable to store the value as on the fly. Let's look at setting some variables and look at uh, what values they hold. Okay, so we'll come back to Octave. Now, in Octave, we can set strings. So let's create a variable called text and we'll make it equal to the string. So open quotes, hello world. And we'll close quotes. And now we can see that text is equal to the value of hello world. So if we type text again, it'll print out hello world. Okay. Now we can also do things like the letter A is equal to the value 5. And as you can now see, A is set to 5. Now we can also do things like B is equal to 4. And we can put a semicolon on the end. And what that does is it executes the command in the background so we don't have to see the um, output. So if we hit enter, you can see that it doesn't print out B equals 4. But it still did set it in the background. Okay. Now we can also do things like C equals A times B. So we're timesing our A var the value in our A variable times the value in our B variable. And as we can see we get 20 because 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, so let's come back to the slideshow. Octave also handles vectors natively. A vector is a list of values. These can be arranged in row or column. We can create a row vector by using the square brackets and specifying the values we want in it with spaces in between. You can also separate them with commas if you like, it's optional. We can also create column vectors by using the square brackets again, but this time we separate each value with a semicolon. This is easier to visualize in Octave, so let's give it a try. So let's create a row vector, so R equals and then we open up our square brackets and then we can do 1 space 2 space 3 space 4 and then we hit the close square brackets and as we can see r equals 1 2 3 4 now because our screen's kind of gotten full let's use the clear command so that's clc so command line clear and it clears our screen so we can see that we're still working with r we'll just type r again and print it out so we can see r equals 1 2 3 4 now let's create a column vector. So C for column equals open square brackets again, but we do one semicolon space, two semicolon space, three semicolon space, four, but we don't need a semicolon on the very end. And then we close it with a square bracket. Now when we hit enter, we'll see it's arranged in a column rather than a row. Okay. So we can also create matrices just as simply as we created vectors. 
we just simply combine our rows and columns to achieve a matrix. You can think of the semicolon as the end of a row, or to go down to the next row. Let's look at making some, of ma some matrices. We'll have a look at the element by element operators now as well. Okay, so if we come back across to Octave, let's create our first matrix. So we'll call it M, so M for matrix, equals, and then we'll do open square brackets, one space two, so our first row is gonna be one and two, semicolon, so down to the next row, and we'll do three and four, close square brackets. So now we have a matrix, which is one, two, and then three, four in the next row. Now we can do element by element operate, oper, uh, operations. So let's do m dot times m. Now we'll get out 1, 4, 9, and 16. Now this is because it's 1 times 1. So the first element in the first uh, row is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. Then we go across to the next element, which is 2. And then 2 times itself is 2. And then we go across to the, well, we go down to the next row, which is three. And then we do three times three is nine. And then across to the four, and then four times four is 16. So you can see it's doing it element by element. So we can also do this for every other type of uh, arithmetic. So m dot plus m equals uh, two, four, six, and eight. As you can see, it's just doubling pretty much all the values. And we can also uh, do minus m, and we get zero because it's minusing from itself. m dot uh, divide by m, and we get one for all of them because obviously a number divided by itself is one. And then we can do m dot to the power of m. And as you can see, it goes through and does uh, each of the powers. Okay, so that's uh, all of the element by element arithmetic. So we'll do our clear screen, isn't it? Yeah, our clear screen, so CLC, and we'll come back to the slideshow. Okay, so Octave also has some special, special matri uh, matrix ma uh, matrices. Uh, so these inbuilt functions are used to generate uh, useful or common matrices. So we have the ones function, which takes n and m. So it generates a matrix n times n of ones. And we have zeros, which does the same thing as ones, except it's with zeros. We have i, so we have i n or i n m, which generates an identity matrix. So that's a matrix with a diagonal of ones. And we have rand n, M, which generates an n times m matrix of uniformly random matrix uh, elements, and we have rand n, which is uh, generates an n times m matrix of normally distributed random uh, random elements with a standard deviation of one. Okay, so let's have a look at each of these in Octave, so we can get a better understanding of what they look like. So oh, come across to Octave. Now we can do the ones function. So ones. And we'll do a three by three of the ones. So three by three. And as you can see, it generates a three by three matrix of all ones. And um, we can do the same thing for zeros. So zeros, three by three. And we get a three by three of all zeros. And now we can also do the I function for identity matrix. And we'll do a four by four. So you only have to put in a four for this. You can do four by four if you like, but uh, it's just easy enough to just do uh, one argument of four. And we get a uh, diagonal matrix, which is all the ones on a diagonal from uh, the, the first element to the last element. We can also use the random uh, function. So ran, uh, rand, and then inside here we can do, say, we want to have one row and five columns. And as we can see, we get five random values between zero and one. Zero and, one. and we can also use the randn function. Um, so we'll do randn between one and ten. And as you can see, we get the values uh, 
that are all, all pretty close to uh, the zero mark. Okay, so we'll jump back to these slides. Now I dedicated a slide uh, to the colon operator because it's very useful. We can use the colon operator to define a set of values. Uh, firstly, we can create a set range with the number to start at and the number to finish at. So one colon five will give us a vector of one to five. We can also specify the increment amount between the range. So for example, two colon two colon 10 will increment from two by two every step until we reach 10 which is included. So we would have a vector of two, four, six, eight, and 10. So let's give it a try. We'll come over to Octave and we'll do our clear screen. So we can do say a variable S, make that equal to one colon five. And as we can see, we get a vector of one to five. And we could, let's change it up and we'll make it do the uh, increment example. So s equals 2 colon 2 colon again and then 10. So this will go from 2 to 10 incrementing by 2. So we get 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Okay, so that that's how we can uh, create ordered uh, lists of values if we know the end and uh, start. Okay. Now, we, we, uh, now that we know how to create vectors and matrices, how do we access the elements? We can use the common circle brackets. Uh, imagine we have a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. We can access the first element by specifying its location in the matrix in x and y coordinates. So S11 will get us the first element in the first row. It's worth mentioning that vectors in Octave start at 1 and go up rather than starting at 0. We could also access the first whole row as a vector by specifying S1, comma, open square brackets, 1, 2, close square brackets, close circle brackets. So we want row 1 and we want the columns 1 and 2. This will return a vector 1, 2. There are several ways we can access the first row. The colon operator again comes into play as we can use it to substitute for all. So let's jump in and have a look at how to access the data in our matrices and vectors. So over an octave, let's just set our S uh, variable. So S equals open square brackets, one space two colon three space four close square brackets. So we got an S variable with the uh, matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we can access the first element in the matrix. So S open circle bracket 1, comma 1. And that'll get us the answer 1 because that's what's in the first uh, the, the first element in the first row. Okay, so let's uh, grab the whole first row this uh, Yeah, the whole first row this time. So Similar to before, but we're going to have our open square brackets, 1, uh, comma, 2, close square brackets, and this will return us the 1, 2, which is the first row of our matrix S. Now, we can also use uh, S, open circle brackets, 1 again, and we can use 1, uh, colon, 2, and that will be the same thing as what we just did, so it will get us the first row. Or alternatively, what we can do is we can do s open brackets one comma just the uh, colon operator and that'll get us the one two as well because the colon operator can be substituted for representing everything in that column or row okay okay some extra things to take note of is that there are a lot of inbuilt functions Octave even comes with the string formatting function sprintf. So for example, printing out pi to eight decimal places. A lot of standard functions you find in other libraries are most likely implemented here in Octave, such as ceiling that rounds up to the nearest whole number, floor rounds down to the nearest whole number, round which uh, rounds to the nearest whole number, and uh, max which is the highest value in a vector or min which is the lowest value in a vector. 
Okay, uh, one last thing before I wind this video up is the help command. This command will display the help notes for any function that Octave contains. All you need to do is type in help, then the function name, and it will let you know what it does and how to use it. For any other information, the Octave docs and wiki are well maintained and very detailed. I'll have this link for you in the for the docs in the description. This concludes uh, this concludes our look at the basic operations of Octave. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next we're going to look at loading and using data in Octave. Thanks for watching.